On our profile this week, we catch up with famous author Harold Stevens. American travel writer Harold Stevens has written over 4,000 newspaper and magazine stories, 26 travel and adventure books based on his own life's experiences, and has lived in Thailand for over 40 years. It's hard to imagine now, but 30 years ago, Phuket was undeveloped as a tourist destination, and the beaches were pristine. In 1974, when Harold Stevens sailed his schooner Third Sea into Patong Bay, he saw barely a soul. However, he found work for his boat at Rawai, off the southern tip of the island, taking visitors at the one hotel out on pleasure cruises through the surrounding islands. It was probably the start of the charter business in these waters. A love of sea craft has stayed with him ever since. And every great adventurer needs a good boat too, and you had one. I, I outfitted my own schooner, a mm -hmm. yeah, 71-foot schooner, and I sailed it for 200,000 miles around the Pacific. And, mm -hmm. uh, I did it for exploring, adventure. I knew to, to really go off and exploring, you needed your own boat. So I had my own boat built here, and then I went exploring all the reefs and the forgotten places of the Pacific. I went up all the rivers, the Sepik in New Guinea and the uh, Rajang River in Borneo, which was you know, almost impossible to take a 70-foot schooner up. But I'd, but I'd have a good crew. You know, I'd train young guys like me then, yeah. <laughs> and we would, uh, would go out there. We discovered the Repulse, a British battleship. Yes, that's an extraordinary thing. You actually got to dive on, on um, wrecks from other conflicts like World War II and so on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, one that's just been breaking recently, they said they found uh, Kennedy's PT-109. Okay. Mm. I wrote about this in a Bangkok world 15 years ago, we found it. We found the wreck by diving. Steve also doubled for Marlon Brando in a film set in the South Pacific and enjoyed a stint on the TV show Adventures in Paradise. But Harold Stevens is just as happy trailblazing in the jungle as he is sailing on the high seas. One time we were after wild elephants. They wanted to, to check and see how many wild elephants. We would move 20 feet ahead and the elephants had been ahead of us. The water was still seeping into their footprints. We didn't see them. So you don't see them. The jungle is absolutely so thick. I had aborigines that were talking to the jungle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, you know, on rafts, what are you talking about? Through an interpreter now. What are you talking about? And they said, the original man. And they'd get a call back. Couldn't see a thing. And then you'd go around the bend and they would be out from the, the real primitive negritos. Nobody wants to write about them. The, the, Asian nations don't want to let people know that they have little unknown people running around. The game department said, no, we'd come across them in a jungle. No, no, come on, let's go, forget about them. We don't want to uh, forget about them. There are more things. You're after the elephants or the one-horned rhino in there. Forget about that. Steve Bigfoot, are you still on his trail? I did a lot of research on what Bigfoot was, you know, the, the findings, what he looked like, his size, uh, the smell and everything. Mm. I met Aborigines in the jungle, a headman, and they said, oh, the Bigfoot, the Lam interior, they called the man of the interior. They talked about Bigfoot in the, north, in the jungle. Of uh, Malaysia. Of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Now, what, this man had no contact with the outside world whatsoever. But yet what he was describing was exactly what they had found outside of his territory. Mm -hmm. And I thought there must be a connection here. The fact that there are like over six foot, you know, seven foot tall, big wide shoulders. They have an odor about them. I found footprints. I photographed them, took castings of them, and I brought them back. I found them. Steve, I know it's across the border from Thailand, but is Angkor Wat the all-time great discovery in Asia? I think it's the all-time great discovery today. <laughs> you know, what people see is on the outer ridges of Angkor Wat. It goes back for miles and miles, you know. But I started going there in 1966, and there was literally no one there. No one. You'd rent a bicycle, the hotel would get a, a bottle of wine for a dollar and your lunch and everything, and I'd go biking off. And I used to do it every year, sort of a, you know, going to Mecca every year. But it was, it was beautiful, and it still is. In 1965, Harold Stevens and colleague Albert Patel 
embarked on a journey to drive around the world and successfully set a record for the longest such trip ever made, one which is still unbroken today. After many mishaps and adventures, bombings, burglaries, breakdowns, floods, fires, sandstorms, stonings, wars and romantic entanglements, Steve returned to America to great praise and recognition for their 18 months of bold adventure. And in 1968 published his book, Who Needs a Road? A bestseller based on his trans-world expedition. The writer's life, can you recommend it? You've got to be dedicated. I get literally hundreds of emails from people that want to be writers. And I, I used to help them. But they get discouraged off. I see how, you know, by the time you learn how to write, you could be a PhD, you could be a doctor, you could be a dentist, you could be a lawyer, you could be anything. Because you have to write, you have to write, you have to sit down and master it, you have to write it over and over again. I get, don't mind me saying, I get a lot of credit for my, for my writing. People write and say, oh, this is great, we like it. Because I write it at the time. When I'm out at sea and a storm is coming, I try to write it. How do I feel? And it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Writing to me is, is like painting. You try to capture the real essence of, of something, not as, as people look at it. So Steve, what's an example of a really good big story in Thailand of recent times? Ben Chang. Mm -hmm. uh, the son of the American ambassador, about 20 years ago now, was digging around in the north and he found pottery. That's the northeast of Thailand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little village called Ben Chang, and they did uh, testing on this, and they found out that this predates anything in Europe by 1,500 years. That means that civilization possibly started right here. Of course, it's rejected by a lot of the historians and geopolitics and everything because they'd, re they'd have to rewrite history. But it's here. It was, it was right here. And they're always discovering new things here. At 80 years young, Harold Stevens remains as passionate as ever about his life of adventure and the joy of writing about it. I love to do it, mm. yeah. I, I'm not worried about the market. If it doesn't sell, okay, it's okay. I just want to do it. Of course you, you hope that it sells, you know. <laughs> That's all for Destination Thailand today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. <laughs> Thank you.